Hi, welcome to Japan Law. For anyone who is wondering whether they need an attorney for a family law issue they're facing, I would recommend contacting、uh, a family law attorney. Our office offers free consultations for those types of clients that are wondering whether or not they need an attorney, whether they can do it on their own. They also don't, sometimes don't even know the type of case or the type of remedy that they are seeking. So, meeting with an attorney, we would explore those avenues with you, explain your case, and let you know what, what you would need going forward. Family law is a special area of law because it deals with people on a personal level. It's not a business thing, it's a my family. This is my family that is at jeopardy. When we're talking about a divorce, it's your life. It's a life that you have spent maybe decades building, and now you're looking at potentially having to cut that in half. It's a very emotional process, especially when children are involved. And so, I think when you're going to look for an attorney, it's important to find someone that not only is capable of handling your case, but it's someone that you're going to be seeing a lot, you're going to be talking to a lot, and they're going to be seeing you at times where you might be a little bit more emotional than you're used to be. It's going to be a vulnerable process. So, I think that when you're choosing an attorney, For a family law issue, you need to find someone that's capable of handling your case, but also someone that you're going to feel comfortable with, someone that you're going to be able to talk to and open up to. Because in family law, that's what we have to have you do. We look through all of your financials, we talk about your relationship with the children, we talk about your past. And so I think that a relationship needs to be there with an attorney and a client. Family law encompasses solution of marriages. It also encompasses paternity cases. So, when you have a child between two parties and they are not married, a paternity case will involve that minor child and the parent's rights and obligations in respect to that child. It also can include domestic violence. So, sometimes we do injunctions in here for victims of domestic violence. For child custody cases and a paternity action, we represent mothers and fathers equally. When someone walks through our doors, we treat their case just as important as we would someone of the opposite sex. We don't have a preference as to whether you're a father or a mother. In a paternity case, I am counsel for the parent. However, all of the decisions we make are determined by looking at what the best interest of the child is. And Florida does have a statutory best interest of the child standard where it enumerates several factors that are to be considered by the court and by the parties when we are looking at what the best interest of the child is. So I am representing my client and representing my client's desires, but also. Looking out for is this in the best interest of the child? So we have to work with the parties to determine a time sharing schedule that's going to be beneficial to them and also to the child. So we will advocate for what our client wants, but at the end of the day, we do have to also educate our clients that the law states certain things that say that it's in the best interest of the child, and we have to sit down and explain that to the clients. and Help move them forward that way. So, Florida law states that a child's best interest is served by having a substantial and meaningful relationship with both parents. Obviously, there are certain situations where that's not feasible due to different circumstances, but in a typical case, that's what the law states. So, whether that substantial and meaningful relationship is 50 50 custody or 60 40 or any kind of time sharing that's below that. We do try to foster a relationship with both parents so that the child is not left in the middle. Child support is definitely a big component of most family law cases because whether we're talking about a dissolution or a paternity case, child support is going to be a factor if there are minor children. Florida is based. Bases child support awards on an income shares model, which means that it looks at both the mother and the father's income and combines those and has a percentage taken out of that that determines the need of that specific child. Then, based on that specific dollar need, they'll divide that between the parents based on their respective incomes. It will also take into account different expenses that each parent may be providing, such as health care or daycare costs, and allots those to the parents based on their respective incomes. 
any person that is potentially dealing with a child support case, I would advise them to speak with an attorney because if they are dealing with a party that might be trying to hide some assets to get a lower child support order, an attorney can help you get access to those documents so that we can make sure that that income that they're reporting is in fact accurate. When it comes to a child support order, parties are required to disclose their income. They will do this through a document that is known as a financial affidavit. So it will go through and ask where the parties work and different assets that they own, different liabilities. Occasionally we do have a opposing party that is underestimating their income in order to try to get a, a lower child support order. It doesn't happen all the time, but in certain cases, it unfortunately does. Florida requires that each party furnish what is called mandatory disclosures. And so those mandatory disclosures are quite extensive, especially if you do have a lot of assets. If you don't have a lot of assets, it's gonna be a little bit more manageable, but those disclosures will be things like tax returns, checking account statements, saving accounts. If you have any type of uh, retirement plans, all of that kind of stuff will need to be disclosed. I think my strengths lie in my ability to be relatable. When you come in, it's not just gonna be a stuffy conversation with another attorney. I am very personable with my clients. I go out of my way to ensure that they are being taken care of and that they feel that they're being taken care of. And I think that's one of my biggest strengths is that I'm not bothered by questions. A lot of times clients are gonna have lots of questions. It's a confusing process, it's an emotional process. I have clients call that's not just questions, but sometimes it's the venting. A lot of time in family law, the situations can be less than amicable. And so it is, it's he said this or she said this and can they do this? And uh, it is, it's a lot of listening and then explaining the process and just making sure that my clients feel that they're being listened to, that they're heard, that they're taken care of, and that we are continuing to try to fight for their desires. And I think that's what makes, sets me apart from other attorneys.